Greetings Mid Coast Euchres, Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new tutorial. I'd like to talk about diatonic harmony today. You might have noticed that song sounded familiar. That was Heat Wave of course, uh, Martha and the Vandellas, 1965. And then 10 years later, 1975, Linda Ronstadt did a great version. Martha and the Vandellas had kind of a more traditional Motown sound with a uh, saxophone, a lot of honking saxophone and stuff and a uh, real different you know sound because the technology was different and just Motown records um, recording methods were different and then uh, Linda Ronstadt came along and did it with more electric guitars and a little more of a rock and roll sort of attitude so two different kind of takes on the same song they did them in different keys too um, they were 10 years apart 65 and 75 but also Martha and the Vandellas did it in the key of E flat uh, it matched Martha Reeves' voice uh, best, probably. And then also um, the instruments that it was written for, piano and saxophone, they can play an E-flat fine, whereas Linda Ronstadt's, um, her voice probably sounded better in D. She recorded many songs in D. And also electric guitars kind of play easier in D than they do in E-flat. So 1975 being a very uh, electric guitar friendly era, Lots of things were written on electric guitars, arranged using electric guitar, and with the electric guitar in mind. So that might have something to do with it being in the key of D, besides Linda Ronstadt's voice. All right, the reason we're talking about this song, Heat Wave, isn't necessarily to do it in mid-coast ukes, although that would be pretty interesting. Uh, it would take a really good singer. But the, uh, the idea is that the, the chords of this song follow strictly, strictly the rules of diatonic harmony. They stay right in there. Another example would be Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone. If you ever check that song out, that uh, is perfect diatonic harmony. Chords that belong to a key and never stray outside of the key. I arranged this in the key of C for us so that we could talk about it, but like I said, the other versions you hear out there are not in C. So using uh, the riff that they do in the very top of the tune, the intro, and that goes throughout the, the tune, they sprinkle this riff uh, throughout, it's in our case, C to F, and we use that pinky C uh, that I've talked about in previous lessons. C with the played with the pinky, and then F, where you play an F chord, but you don't lift that pinky C, you leave it down to get a different sounding F. So. That recreates the, the riff from the song. So, rhythm-wise, that's... Sorry, one and two and three and four and that's a real classic kind of riff uh, using the C and F chords like that. So that it's one and two, two being the F chord, but then immediately getting away from the F and going right back to the C on the end of two. So you get one and two and three and four and so on two and on four. You go to an F chord. Uh, the backbeat. Remember the backbeat? Uh, last last tutorial we had was all about the backbeat. That creates a serious backbeat. That's a really infectious kind of rhythm, whether it's played on ukulele, guitar, piano, we all know it. Alright, so that is the big riff of the song, and we'll see that later on. It reoccurs. Um, the verse switches over to a minor key. Um, it doesn't stray outside of the key of C, but it um, emphasizes A minor more, so we call that the relative minor. I'll explain all the music theory in just a moment, but I just want to show you the chords. D minor, E minor, A minor. Then we do that again. Then we do the D minor and E minor again, but it climbs up to F and G. D minor, E minor, F, G. And that really is an interesting part of the song that, uh, again, I'll get back to. I'm uh, kind of putting off talking about a couple of these things for now because I want to make sure we start from the ground up. So what is diatonic harmony? Diatonic harmony is chords that are derived from a scale. In this case, the C major scale. Every single chord in this song, I'll list the chords. We have a C chord. That's the one chord in the key of C. We have an F chord. That's the four chord in the key of C. We have D minor. 
that's the 2 chord in the key of C. We have E minor, that is the 3 chord in the key of C. We have G, that's the 5 chord in the key of C. And finally we have A minor, that's the 6 chord in the key of C. So this song uses just about all the chords in the key of C, except for B diminished. It doesn't do that. That's rare that you would hear a diminished chord in a, in a context like this. But it, it hits upon most of the important chords in the key. So that's really interesting. It sticks very close to the chords of the key. In fact, it never strays. And so that's a diatonic harmony. And also, it even does some of these chords in order, in exact order, like Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone does. That last part I did. D minor is the two chord. E minor is the three chord. F is the four chord, and G is the five chord, so it just climbs up to the second scale degree, D, the third scale degree, E, the fourth scale degree, F, and the fifth scale degree, G. It just like climbs right up that ladder. That uh, creates a couple of different uh, things for the listener. It, creates a sense of expectation and anticipation because you're expecting it it climbs 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 and you expect well it must be climbing somewhere there's got to be a destination and sure enough the destination the payoff is that riff he So the final destination is the big fat C chord that it finally lands on that resolves all this tension. And the chorus, which provides a release from the verse. The verse is really building up tension. Whenever I'm with him, uh, get this feeling inside, burning, etc., etc. It's, you know, talking about this um, uh, feeling that's building up and building up. And then when it finally gets to the heat wave part, that's kind of a release. It tells you what... Um, the feeling is like. It's like a heat wave. So very interesting the way that the lyrics and the chords kind of in tandem build, 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 and then you get the payoff. You get the thing that it's all leading to, which is the chorus. And that's uh, masterful songwriting. So let's talk about each and every chord. The C chord again being the one chord. The F chord being the four chord. So we're going one, four, one, four, one, four, one. Lots of songs are built off of that. That's a Martha and the Vendellas Motown thing, but that's also a gospel thing. And it's also, um, you know, Paul Simon. He had that song, uh, Love, Me, Love Me Like a Rock, from uh, his first solo album after he left Simon and Garfunkel. Um, when I was a baby boy, and my mama told me, I said, Who do? So if ever you uh, get a chance to listen to Paul Simon singing Love Me Like a Rock, and you're going to hear that one chord going to the four chord. It's a very gospel thing. It's a very soulful kind of thing to do. So that's a nice thing. And then uh, the rest of the verse we had, um, Whenever I'm with him, da -da -da -da, it all of a sudden shifts to a minor key. We have three minor chords being emphasized in the verse. So that's kind of interesting how it went from this bright, happy, gospel-y, and clap and C to F thing uh, to a D minor to E minor to A minor the two chord to the three chord to the six chord those are the three minor keys in any given major key the two chord is always minor three chord is always minor and the six chord is always minor so he, in, they um, used all three of the minor chords of the key to uh, write this verse so again, really good songwriting. Using basic elements, we're not using anything fancy, but wow, they just, they wrote such a great song. I think it was Lieber and Stoller that wrote this. I'll have to go back and check it. But um, that famous songwriting team that wrote so many hits uh, back in the day, although this might have been Carol King and Jerry Goffin, her husband at the time. Uh, I'll, I'll go check my notes and see who, who wrote the tune. But whoever wrote it, man, what a great song. So diatonic harmony is in play here. It's a uh, 100%... Uh, what the song is about. Just uh, two quick notes about playing the song uh, outside of diatonic harmony, but you can um, change the minor chord part of this song to sevenths if you want. You could do a D minor seven. 
take your D, uh, Linda Ronstadt's band does a couple of minor seventh chords in there besides just plain old minors. Whereas the Martha and the Vandellas version, they, eh, they stick a little more to minor and not so much minor seven. But if you take your pinky and add it to the A string third fret on a D minor chord, that's a D minor seven. If you move that chord up two frets, just slide the whole thing up because it's a movable chord, you get an E minor seven. And then A minor seven we know is like an open, uh, open thing like that with four open strings. So here's the verse with uh, minor sevens. So that sounds pretty good. It jazzes it up a little bit, makes it sound a little thicker. So you can use minor sevens in there. That's totally acceptable. And then the very last thing I wanted to talk about was the rhythm. What is that rhythm? Not that different from the rhythm in a song like Mac the Knife, believe it or not. Bobby Darren, Mac the Knife. Um, it's a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note tied to a half note. That's a uh, foreign language to you. If that sounds like mumbo jumbo, then... Um, just bear with me, I'll explain all of that. So we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So notice how I'm hitting on one, one and two and, and then I hit on the and of two, the all important and of two. I call it that a lot, the all important and of two because that's a feature in so much music, so much music that has a catchy rhythm to us, whether it's rock and roll, soul, R&B, Latin music, the end of two plays a very important role. Uh, that's something I've noticed over the decades and the years of uh, doing music is the end of two. So that's why I call it the all important end of two. It certainly is important. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two regular tempo one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and so that bears uh, practicing right there you definitely want to take that rhythm and master it one and two and three and four and one and two and if you can do that you're uh, coming right along with your rhythm and you're uh, getting some rhythmic vocabulary going. So anyway, Midcoast Eucharist, I hope you enjoyed that mini lesson on diatonic harmony and this great song called Heat Wave. And I will catch you later. Bye-bye.